and welcome to the Brazilian BA guest. Today, my guest is someone who writes books and talks about very interesting concepts that are very interesting for any business analyst. If this is your first time in my channel, subscribe to it, take a look at the other videos here and click on the bell. My guest today is Mr. Mark Smalley. Thank you for coming, Mark. A great pleasure. Lovely to be with you. Really is. Oh, this is totally my pleasure. Mark, my question for you today is about a concept that I see that you are working on and I had never heard of it before. What is product usership and who cares about it? Yeah, that is an excellent question. Now, I'm glad that you have never heard about the term before because I invented it. So if you, if you hear it again, it came from me. Well, at least I hope it came from me. And it's a, it's a topic that I think deserves more attention. And I don't think it's something that a BA would be involved in, in actually executing the role, but I think they should be aware of the phenomenon and possibly the whole wink, the whole, the weakest link in the whole value stream could be right at the end where products are used. I'm talking mostly about software products. Right. Uh, you, you, probably familiar with the with the agile way of working where scrum for instance talks about a value stream that ends with a shippable software increment you know developers make a bit of software that's ready to ship well that hasn't delivered any value yet until it's shipped until it's operational so i think we should extend the value stream a bit further down the line it's got to be operational but even if you if you say our definition of done is the system is operational, if you think about it, no value has been realized until a user uses it. Now, and if you think about it and think about yourself as a user as well, you use simple tools like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, things like that, and just ask yourself the question, how well do you know the functionality that these applications can provide you with? If, it, if it's me, I, I know the stuff that I use. I know there's a lot more, but I don't know what it is. So firstly, are you aware of the functionality that's available? Second one is, are you using the functionality effectively? Have you, or are you just using it the best way that you can, uh, which might not be the best way that you could use it? Are you interpreting the data correctly? For instance, in an application where you see a customer presented, what's a customer? Is that somebody who's recently bought a product, who has bought a product 10 years ago? Are they still a customer? Uh, what about somebody who's just registered on your website but hasn't bought anything yet? Are they a customer? So if you think about, you know, this is all about information systems and information. Uh, it's only when somebody acts on a decision that's been improved by information that they got out of an information system that any value is realized. And your, the second part of your question, and who cares, who is responsible, who feels responsibility or who has who's accountable? Well, I think I know who's accountable, but who's responsible for ensuring that the users actually use the functionality effectively and use the data or information effectively as well. And that's something that's, that's often, users are often left to their own devices, almost literally. They have, they have to sort it out for themselves. And I, I think that could be a weak, the weakest link in the chain. And finally, as the importance, the significance of information systems if you think about the societal and economic significance of information systems, that's increasing all the time. The potential loss by not ensuring that users can actually realize the value, get the return on investment. I think that's, you know, it's becoming a serious management issue. So that, that's, that's basically what it's all about. I'm trying to bring this to my own reality. And uh, I see two different 
approach that I can think about to usership in this video that we are making right now, right? I, I, I'm posting this video on YouTube and YouTube provides me a full range of tools to analyze data that they capture by, by my, my, my viewers, by my subscribers. I'm sure they had a lot of work to build those, those reports and I hardly can use any of them because they are so complex. And, and, and on the other side, I can see myself as the producer. So like right now we are producing something and I'm not sure that my users are connected or using the content that we are providing right here at the best way. I have those comments they are uh, putting on those videos and I have the, this bunch of data that Google is giving to me and I'm not sure that I have been as a as a product producer, right? We are producing a product here. Uh, and, and right now they are not using it. So the value is going to, to happen later, right? As you said, the value is going to happen when people is watching us in, 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 the, in the time of the audience, not in the time that we are living right now. So the product usership must be measured in, a, in, a, in another time, not, not here, not when we're building it. Interesting. Uh, 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 how can I how can I make that better? Yeah, that, that's a good that's a good point. I think in terms of accountability, if you put this in a business context, we could talk about internal users and external users. Let's just talk about internal users because there are many in organizations people who have to use information systems that the company provides to them. Um, it, in the end, business management is accountable for the people who are doing the work. The people who are doing the work use it, that they use, that they have the resources that are useful to them and that they use the resources correctly. So it's a business accountability to make sure that the people are working as effectively as possible. But in practice, if I'm a user, I'm working for a company, you're the boss, I'm working for your company as one of your many employees. You've given me an applic several applications that I have to use in a certain business context. And I want to understand, now something strange has happened. There's a new kind of customer who's come along and I want to know, now what kind of discount code is applicable for this customer in this situation? I can call the service desk who provide the application, but they can only tell me which, which buttons to press. But I want to know when do I press which button? So which, how, so what, how do I use the functionality? Not what, well, the first question is, what is the functionality? The second one is how to use it in a specific business context. And I think that's something that business analysts should be aware of increasingly extending their scope because if you think if you think you could talk about an information system as as a, a a piece of technology that provides functionality but if you extend the the notion of an information system to include the people who use the system as well and the people who support the system i think the business analyst should also be concerned with analyzing and designing the whole system so including the people and the roles and responsibilities. And I, I suggest that in many cases, this is a, a part of the, the area that's neglected. If people are pleased, well, you know, we've we built the system, it's, it's up and running. Uh, so, so, you know, bye-bye, we're gone. I, I think, I think the, the scope should be extended. Yeah, it's a different point of view, and I, I believe that's the idea of business analysis, not system analysis. You are not looking for a sort of software system analysis. You are not yeah, looking yeah. for software. You are looking for a business, and a business encompasses the strategy, encompasses people, encompasses processes, encompasses politics, encompasses culture. And a business is a, something very complex and should be looked at in this whole scenario. And I know that you write books and maybe you have some suggestion for us to, to understand deeper this usership uh, concept. Uh, can we find that in any place? Yeah, well, a couple of things. Uh, a while ago, I wrote a 
post on LinkedIn called Product Usership. You'll find that pretty easily. I, I publish quite a bit on LinkedIn, and I write books, small books, from time to time. Uh, I've now got three. I've, in fact, I put them in a series. All of my books on Amazon are called Reflections On. The latest book, which in fact was published this month, is about this topic. It's called uh, Reflections on Product to Value. So you've got a product, but how do you get the value out of it? And it's about extending the value stream, which is off, which often stops when the product has been delivered, extending the value stream to actually using it. So that's the concept of product usership. And a, a funny, a funny characteristic of my books is that because there's um, there's a nice little uh, spiral pattern on the cover, which I repeat in, in various colours across the books, but it's based on the on the Fibonacci sequence of numbers. So I priced my books in dollar cents according to the Fibonacci numbers. My latest book costs cost three dollars ten cents in Kindle format. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, three, three, sorry, three seventy-seven. Three seventy-seven um, for the Kindle one, and six ten. That's the next Fibonacci number up for the for the paperback. <laughs> that's, that's I couldn't I couldn't resist doing that. <laughs> I will add the links here below this video so people can just find your art corner on LinkedIn and, and your books here. So be my, uh, be my guest, people, to, 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 to read about it. It's a very affordable price, so it's it, it, it's not expensive. Thank you very much for coming, Mark. It was a pleasure to have you here. A delightful experience. Thank, thanks so much. Thank you.